back to the football side of it, on Kobe Mainu, we, we all agree that he's had a, a great couple of games, a couple of appearances. We've seen him a lot this season for Man United, himself and Rob, and it was obvious from the outset that he's got something about him. So why did Southgate not pick him for the squad in the first place? Because he was in the under-21s, it was all, let's play it safe. He's obviously a talent. Is that not a mistake on Southgate's part? Has he got lucky now by actually the fact yeah, that he's Yeah, I think he has. I mean, we, we did a story... Um, I can't remember what it was now. It was a few weeks ago. Um, well, I, I'd been told that essentially there was a, quite a few conversations between Gareth Southgate and Lee Carsley, the other 21 manager, to, to, to work out which squad he should go in. And I think there was a, there was a desire to not expose him too early to, to the, you know, the bright lights of, the, of senior football. But I think from what I'm told, I think what happened was that they initially thought, let's protect him. And then they took a look at the squad. <laughs> the senior squad and looked at the options they had available because it is a real problem position. That's but he's played for Man United now. I think there's a bit of an arrogance on the FA's part though that the England team is much bigger than club football because it isn't anymore. The Champions League is... No, but he big... played 20 games. Like, but he's played for Man United. He's played now. 20 senior matches Absolutely, in his career. But, but he's playing for the biggest club in the Premier League. So the, the pressure that comes in a, in a bad team, by the way, mm. that he's, he's dealing with that pressure. Now, Man United would probably say we prefer him not to go to the Euros because we want him to have a summer off and develop. But... For, for England to think that, well, let's protect him because, oh, it's a big, it's a big environment. Well, friendly games at Wembley are not a big environment, even if it's Brazil. I think Man United I, is a different I, level I think of scrutiny. Really, I, th I think from from what I've been told as well, I think there's been conversations between United and England about the kind of character he is, mm. and particularly at United in the summer when they knew that they were taking him on tour, were not not concerned is the wrong word, but were wary that he's quite a shy sort of mm. reserved lad and. You know, on tours in America, you have to do lots of, of press, and there was a, a press day that was that was done by Marriott, and he was meant to be put up for these interviews. He kind of made it known that he wasn't massively keen, so in the end, they put him with Varane and Dallo and Wan Bissaka to kind of give him some some help on the day. And even then, he kind of went, oh, "I'm not I'm not really sure about it," and, and in the end, got got pulled out. So there's this kind of arrogance about his play when he's on the field, that kind of the confidence to kind of get the ball in tight spaces and move it dead quickly. I'm not entirely sure he's that kind of character off the field and so when you're talking about moving from Man United to England it's particularly something that Gareth is mm. is wary of that kind of it's that if you do chuck someone in if there's a chance to kind of protect them maybe then maybe you take that chance I think possibly at the Liverpool game the clamour was so high after that and he's got such a problem at six he said that to me in that press conference after the Brazil game that he's got such a problem at six mm. is that even if there are slight concerns about is he the, the character to be able to handle not the pressure of playing on a field, but the kind of the, you call it the bright lights there. And it is, it's, it's intense, isn't it? The mm. minute you get called up to England ahead of a, a major tournament, whether you can handle that. But because the clamour was so high after that Liverpool game, particularly the manner of which United won his performance in that game, probably just... And they put, they put him up. I mean, they put him up. Yeah. He did radio interviews. I'm assuming he's done next to nothing. He's done nothing in United. United. Yeah, there you go. And, the, and yet one day in the England camp and he's speaking England to the radio. different way of doing it, <laughs> haven't they? Yeah. And I remember United being panicked with, with Mason Greenwood. That they, that they wouldn't let anyone speak to Mason Greenwood at all, to the point where PLP have got a rule where if you play a certain amount of games, you have to be put up. Mm. And he was scoring goals and PLP had gone, so right, it's a great time to do it. Like you, It's all positive, let's do it. And they said, no, no, I can't do it. Mm. Um, and pulled him out of it and took the fine in the end from the from Premier League Productions. And they were they were panicked that the minute that he got called up by England on 21s, that they don't have the same rules and would stick him straight up in front of the press. And that's exactly what happened. His first interview mm. that he did, probably his only one in England, was done via the FA with a couple of journalists who covered the under-21 team. I think that the reality is, though, that you know we all know that, apart from Jude Bellingham, who at 20 is an incredible footballer and you know speaker off the pitch in terms of he's, he's very confident in himself, most young players do find it difficult in front of the, the cameras or yeah. you know in, in, in that environment. I, from my experience, what, you, you don't really get a good interview about a player until they're about 30 years old, yeah. until they've actually ex become experienced on the pitch and off it and they're more comfortable to talk. If you're 18, 19, 20, Especially if, you know, you talk about Kobe Mainu on the summer tour, she's not really played for United, yeah. so he, he probably would have felt a bit of an imposter alongside people like Barant. So, But now, I think the confidence comes from playing on the pitch, but I can totally understand protecting him off the pitch, but I think on the pitch, his performance has been so good. He's, he's now United number one midfielder, yeah. ahead of Casemiro, ahead of Scott McTominay. So I think protecting him from the English scene is just head in the sand stuff at times. I think you've got to go with it. I, I, the, the, one other element to that, though, is that uh, you don't tend to get in the squad that easily under Southgate. 
you know, he, he, I think he's so conscious of culture and he's worked so hard to get the players wanting to play for England again. I think he's, sometimes he's, look, I mean, we all know the argument about Phillips and Henderson, you know, maybe he's Maguire, maybe he's too loyal to some of them. But I think he'd rather be too loyal and protect that kind of culture of I want to be here and I feel valued here than having a kid coming out of nowhere and suddenly he's in a team and it can be look I'm not this is not to say that Mainly doesn't deserve to, everything he's got I'm just saying that from a wider cultural point of view I think he's so wary of that you think about you know Grealish was playing really well for a long time couldn't yeah. get in the team Madison. couldn't get in the squad Madison couldn't get in the squad for a long time Ivan Tony pre-ban couldn't get in the squad for a long time there are a number of Trent Alexander-Arnold couldn't get in the team for a long time when he won Champions Leagues at Liverpool you know he there are it tends to be a slow burner for Southgate he wants a lot of evidence he wants to know that there's a body of work there at club level that can then justify coming in and then once you're in it's then it's then can be harder to go out than it should be I think the main new situation may turn into like a real test for Southgate because the, the accusation that's leveled at him is that he can be at times risk averse. Mm. And if you've got a situation now in the next, I don't know, two months of the season, that Jordan Henderson plays all those games and stays fit, Calvin Phillips somehow gets back in the West Ham team, gets his confidence back and he's fit, ready to go, that you've got Henderson and Phillips, who Southgate is used far more, has got far more trust in, and you've got a first game of the Euros and you've got to pick probably one of Henderson, Mainu and Phillips. And the public will clamour for, for Mainu. If he carries on his form, they'll say it's got to be Mainu. 18, even if he's got two caps and played 30 senior games, it's got to be Mainu. And the back of Southgate's mind will be thinking, yeah, but Phillips was really good at Euro 2020 and Henderson's never let me down. Mm. And it's, it's going to turn into such, it feels like one of those Grealish decisions or Madison decisions or yeah. Foden at the last World Cup where people are screaming at him to, do, to show that he can, can be... Can take a risk and, you, and, and I don't know whether he's got that in his in his mindset to be able to do it you'll hear a lot of talk about balance yeah um, you know because you're absolutely right I mean look, if you look at the two games and we talked about this previously but I think he's torn a bit between 4-2-3-1 which gives him a little bit more solidity in midfield and allows Bellingham to play as a 10 and go and influence the game further forward or a 4-3-3 where you're, you're but you're relying on Declan Rice as your single pivot yeah. your six to to mop up and you look at the goals that, you know, the counter-attack chances that, that, that England conceded against Belgium. I know there are obviously defensive areas, particularly the first one with Jordan Pickford. But England don't possess a centre-back pairing that's good enough mm. and is not quick enough, particularly when you take Kyle Walker out of that back four. There's actually not a lot of pace yeah. in that back four at all. And if you're asking a team to go and dominate, to go and dictate, and you've only got one defensive midfielder who's just trying to cover all that ground ahead of you, you can see a scenario where in the summer Southgate listen if he if he listens to all of this noise and you know take the handbrake off Gareth go and play these kids go and get as many attacking players in the team as you can you can see a scenario where a team that's very very good on the break well, it's, does what Belgium did it's exactly what happened has happened at Man United when when mm. Maguire's played at centre half he's not quick enough to defend high up the field he has to defend on the halfway yeah. line there's a huge gap between your defence and your forward players you've got a holding midfield player in United's case it's Casemiro who's been told that he's got to cover half the field. And then people wonder why he's been dribbled past 20 times. Mm. The reason is that the gap in midfield is so massive. And I've yeah. seen it in when England play major tournaments again and again and again. The game gets massively stretched and England can't cope. And, and you're right, it's because they haven't got that pace at the back to, to squeeze high up the field like yeah. Arsenal would or City would. That's why Walker is so yeah. vital to that back four. Mm.